We are now 19 days out from the election, close enough that the mechanics of voting are becoming as important as the political combat between the two parties. In Arizona, for example, you have to show ID in order to vote. But here's a neat thing about that. One of the things you can present for ID is your voter registration card issued by your local county. Your voter registration card comes on a form that includes a lot of information about the election. Like you see here, important election dates. And then it says November 6th, 2012, which of course is the really important election date. Now, there are lots of Americans who speak Spanish in Arizona, and so the voter registration card form is also written in Spanish. Fechas importantes de elecciones. And then what does it say is the date for the election day? The Spanish part of it? Oh, Ocho de November. Wait, wait, go back. It says right there in English that the election is November 6th, which it is. But in Spanish, it's November 8th. Seriously, Arizona? Right this way to the polls, Hispanic Americans, two days after the election. Seriously? This dark political art comes courtesy of the elections office for Maricopa County, Arizona in Phoenix. That is the most populous county in Arizona by far. More people in the state live there than anywhere else in the state. In Maricopa County, their elections department handed out in their office voter registration cards with the wrong date for voting in Spanish only. They say they're not sure how many voters got this wrong information. Maybe 50 people, maybe fewer, maybe more. They say they do not know. Will those people get the right information somehow? Nobody knows. Whether it's by mistake or lack of effort or outright intent, creating confusion is its own form of voter suppression. Now check this out. In Pennsylvania on October 2nd, a judge ruled that Pennsylvania voters will not have to show ID in order to vote in November. He put that law on ice back on October 2nd. And look at this. Almost two weeks later, a billboard in Spanish in Northeast Philadelphia, si quieres votar, muestrala. If you want to vote, show it. Show ID, especially if you speak Spanish and live in a Latino part of Philly. Almost two weeks after the judge said no one needs ID to vote in Pennsylvania, this taxpayer-funded billboard in Spanish still said otherwise. I know it takes time to update all the websites and pull down all the posters, but seriously, nobody in charge in Pennsylvania noticed that giant billboard, the one that could make people think they would not be allowed to vote, so maybe they shouldn't bother. Did nobody notice that? Or was it just that nobody cared? The billboard company told Bloomberg that the ad won't be changed for another couple of weeks. Meantime, too bad for anybody who believes what the state's ad tells them. Confusion is its own form of voter suppression. Uh, and so is fear. A couple of weeks ago, a member of the Cleveland, Ohio City Council noticed this new billboard in a largely African-American, largely poor neighborhood in Cleveland. It reads, voter fraud is a felony, exclamation point, up to three and a half years and a $10,000 fine. You can practically hear the gavel banging, right? The councilwoman wanted to know who paid for this billboard. The sign says only that the money came from something called a private family foundation. The councilwoman wanted to know if her poor and minority neighborhood was the only one with a billboard board equating voting with a lengthy prison sentence? The answer is no. The same anonymous scary billboards have since been spotted in poor and minority neighborhoods all over Ohio. Dozens of them in Cleveland and in Cincinnati, 30 of them in the hard luck precincts of Columbus. Also in Wisconsin, another swing state where these billboards have been popping up in black and Latino sections of Milwaukee. 20 of them. 20 voting is scary billboards at least. Voting in this country is not supposed to be scary. It is not supposed to be confusing. You are not supposed to have to guess when you vote or how you vote or whether there might be different days for Hispanic Americans and non-Hispanic Americans Americans to vote and you have to figure out which day you should show up. You should not be pressured into believing that someone will try to send you to jail for voting. That is what it is coming down to though which should probably make you more determined to vote than ever. Joining us now is Bob Herbert, Distinguished Senior Fellow at Demos, also a contributor at PolicyShop.net. Bob, thanks for being here. Hi, Rachel. I feel like um, those examples are so blunt and so brutal that they're almost unbelievable. But we, and I didn't, when we first started hearing that that stuff existed, I almost thought that it was a Photoshop hoax. No. But it's really happening. No. 
Uh, I've been covering this um, since 2000. We all remember what happened then. And the Republican uh, Party and the conservatives in general have been on this voter suppression, voter intimidation kick ever since then. They're on the losing side of uh, the demographics in this country, and they are on the losing side when it comes to the issues. Uh, but what they are trying to do is keep as many of their opponents away from the polls as possible. And I think they've been doing a very effective job of it. This should be a much bigger story. The, it, it should be a bigger story. There's frustration, I know, from a lot of people who want this to be the bigger story, biggest story in the country. But I think a lot of the reason that people get sort of stymied in trying to report on it is you get as far as, as paid for by a private family foundation, and you don't know who to be mad at. You just think it's gross, but you don't know how to trace it anywhere. That's why I feel like the Pennsylvania story itself ought to be of national significance, because it's the state of Pennsylvania that is still intimidating people into thinking that they're not going to be able to. I, I completely agree. And then these, the, these issues that you're talking about tonight, that should be a bigger national story as well. But also, you've got, you've got these um, campaigns going where they're going to send poll watchers out on election day and to intimidate voters showing up at the polls. And you mentioned that chaos equates with voter suppression. So they try to foment as much chaos as possible so that if election day comes and you're in line for two or three or four hours, a lot of people will decide to turn around and go home home. Uh, a lot of people have been intimidated by things like that billboard sign, but also just the word going out that something's going to happen to you, might happen to you if you show up at the polls. And you don't know whether you're, you're committing a crime or not, when in fact all you want to do is cast a ballot. So what's happening is, you know, voters by the scores of thousands are being intimidated in this country. And in an election as close as this one, that could end up being a determining factor. This is, to me, a strategic explanation for why the Democrats have gone so far, uh, have, gone, have, pushed, have pushed so hard on the idea of voting early, right? Because one thing that it does, it lets you bank votes. Right. And so it's, it's a sort of small C conservative approach to the election. No October surprise because you've already got your vote in. So it doesn't matter if anything's happening right. uh, later on toward election day. But the other side of it is that there will be shorter lines. There is less potential for chaos and there's more potential to make it up and actually get your vote cast in a way that it's going to be counted if you give yourself some leeway and you don't push it till election. No, no question about that. But I also think that the Democratic Party and also a lot of progressive groups should have fought harder. Now, they fought the legal battles in the court, and they were, they were very important, and they won several very of them. Successful, yeah. But I think that they should have fought more on the ground uh, to press back against this voter suppression, which is really voter intimidation. Yeah, and we are seeing, yes, and, and that's what we're seeing now. After all the legal battles went the Democratic way, we are still seeing Republican officials on the ground pushing it to the limit and in some cases beyond exactly. in terms of what they can get. Right. Uh, Bob Herbert from uh, Demos and Policy Shop, thank you very much for Great being here. You. Appreciate it. All right, um, we will be right back. The 1% has had a great run. I want to live in a country where it's a government by the 100%, not by the 1%.